Hogwarts Legacy is rated T for teen. You might have seen some ads across your social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I've been seeing some ads now more prominently, and you might have noticed a little rating system. Well, we have official confirmation from their updated social accounts. So Hogwarts Legacy in the actual bio, Live the Unwritten, February 10th, 2023, rated T for 14. Uh, also on their website, we have at the bottom, if you scroll all the way down, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There is the rating. It says T for teen and it has a more descriptive uh, detail for what that what is identified for T for teen. What does it mean? Let's look. ESRB. Actually, I do have to note, there is this excellent docu-series on Netflix called High Score. If you want an overview of the history, broadly, of video games, it's really excellent. And there's a specific episode that is about Mortal Kombat and violence that actually sparked the creation of this independent board that rates all video games, basically. So in the United States, there was a lot of concern in the early 90s for violence. And if you are familiar with the discourses about violence and video games and what are we having children consume and all that sort of rhetoric, um, then you might be aware of the ESRB as basically the response from a coalition of game publishers to be like, okay, we can address it. Let's create this uh, independent board that reviews all games. You can also browse on the ESRB website to see a little bit of the history and how it's evolved over time since 1994 when it was established. So if you're looking to Ravenclaw out and learn more about this and the rating system and how this came to be, check out all the links in the description. It stands for Entertainment Software Rating Board. And you can go to this website. I'll link everything in the description so that you have access to it. You can actually search ESRB game ratings for uh, games that are already rated. Now, even though Hogwarts Legacy says that it's T14, it is not up here yet. Um, you know, it's going to take some time, I think, for it to update. But you can look up stuff. So, for example, let's just take a glance at Skyrim, which I already know. I know these ratings because I play the games and I already... Uh, can tell you what they are. Uh, Skyrim is rated M for mature, and you can have, like, this is an example of the rating. It has the content descriptors. Uh, it has a column for interactive elements, which is primarily going to be stuff like in-game purchases or uh, interacting with players on the Switch, uh, and then a rating summary so you can expand it and see the full detail about that. Um, up at the top, it has a ratings guide that goes over the different categories that a game can be rated under. So you go all the way to the left for E for everyone. It's generally suitable for all ages, may contain minimal cartoon fantasy or mild violence and or infrequent use of mild language. Then there's another everyone level that's 10 and up. It gives you kind of like a, an age range um, or a minimum age for that. T for teen, which is Hogwarts Legacy, content is generally suitable for ages 13 and up, may contain violent, suggestive themes, crude humor, minimal blood, uh, simulated gambling, and or infrequent use of strong language. There's no gambling. It's not listed. That's why you have the content descriptors to give you a little bit more information about what specifically is in that game. Uh, we also have mature 17 and up, um, adults only. And then the rating pendings is what we've been seeing. Uh, so there's two categories for rating pending. One that is a likely mature 17 and up. It kind of gives that sort of like, okay, well, we it's not fully rated yet, but we can kind of give you a heads up that this is likely going to be in that M for mature rating category. And up until this point, we've been seeing the RP on all of the trailers and the promotion that they've shown so far for Hogwarts Legacy. So it's not yet assigned the final rating, but now we do have the rating. So if we look at our T for Teen, we go back to the Hogwarts Legacy website, let's look at these specific categories. Content descriptors indicate content that may have triggered a particular rating or maybe of interest. So first up for Hogwarts Legacy, we have fantasy violence. I'm actually gonna use just these categories up above. So under violence, there 
there is fantasy violence, violent actions of a fantasy nature involving human or non-human characters in situations easily distinguishable from real life. Now, I think we know from the trailers that we've seen thus far, fantasy violence is definitely present in the game. Uh, next up, we have blood. Uh, there are different categories here. So actually, let me go back to violence real quick. So you can have this range of where you have violence that is cartoon-like. There's also a category for cartoon-like for blood. Um, intense violence, uh, if there's violent references, so it's a reference to a violent act, but maybe not the violence itself. Um, and then violence right here where it says aggressive conflict may contain bloodless dismemberment, but fantasy violence is definitely the appropriate descriptor for what we've seen, obviously, from Hogwarts Legacy content so far. Blood and gore. Animated blood is like that cartoony like where it's like it's unrealistic. Uh, then there's gore. We're not going to see gore. Uh, we haven't seen any gore. I don't expect to see gore, especially for Hogwarts Legacy, an IP that's likely trying to be broad ish for a range of players. So, yeah, depictions of blood. I think we have seen some of that also in our trailers. It's not like over the top, but you know, there is going to be combat and we are going to see likely blood being spilled <laughs> from different characters. Then we have mild language and you'll see the note at the bottom that uh, there, it says mild is intended to convey low frequency, intensity, or severity. So under language, there are different categories or subcategories here. Uh, so for mild language, mild to moderate use of profanity. Now, I saw some people online talking about, oh, this is interesting, but I feel like we could, I mean, it's probably not going to be a lot. It's probably going to be what you might expect, especially if you've read the Harry Potter series. There is some mild language in there. Uh, so I think it fits with the wizarding world and what they're trying to be consistent with in their in their products, I guess, um, as opposed to strong language, which will be explicit and or frequent use of profanity. And then there's categories for lyrics, which I thought was interesting too. Then finally, we have use of alcohol, which I also saw people talking about. That's gonna be under substances. Substances, there are different subcategories here. Um, so of course we have references to substances and then there's the use of. And so for Hogwarts Legacy specifically, it says use of alcohol. This is, it shows up in games as well. So it's, I believe in Skyrim, it might be in, we're gonna look at some games and see what the different ratings are. Cause I feel like there might be use of alcohol in Breath of the Wild as well. But the consumption of alcoholic beverages, I'm assuming it's gonna be stuff like butter beer, fire whiskey, the wizarding world type things, um, maybe some mead, I don't know. But we see that in the Harry Potter series as well. So none of this is too surprising because it seems very consistent with the world itself. So let's look at, I wanna go and look at some uh, specific games because I wanted to, I showed you Skyrim, M for Mature. Yeah, I could see that. I mentioned Breath of the Wild though. And Breath of the Wild is E for everyone, 10 and up. This says also fantasy violence, mild suggestive themes, use of alcohol. And the more specific rating summary here has a very detailed uh, description and it has some examples. Um, and it just gives you more context. And particularly with the ESRB, you have the rating itself. And then the purpose of creating this is to help consumers and in particular parents um, make decisions about what to purchase for their children or just for people to know like this is what you're getting into when you're buying this product. These are the kinds of themes that are involved. Um, and then not all of the games that I've searched have a rating summary, but the rating summary has more specifics that give you context for what these themes and the descriptors mean. And just in case you're interested, so in the Harry Potter IP, and I have played Lego Harry Potter, I haven't played any of these other games, uh, but Lego Harry Potter collection is going to be an E for everyone, 10 and up. Uh, this has the descriptor, this is an adventure game, your small Lego versions, it's really fun, I love destroying everything. 
It's awesome. Characters screech or cry out in pain when hit. So it, this is kind of an example of like, again, it's giving you that descriptive of what is it that you're going to see with cartoon violence for this game. Here, let me paint you a tiny picture um, and maybe help you make an informed decision. On the other hand, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, there's also a Part 2. This is for the Wii. I have never played this game. I don't own a Wii and I've never heard of it either. Uh, this is an action adventure game game where players assume the role of Harry Potter as he battles waves of enemies on a quest to find mystical objects and defeat an evil force. From an over-the-shoulder perspective, players use a wand to shoot beams of light at fantasy beings, for example, dark wizards, giant spiders, fairies, trolls. Hey, this seems very similar to stuff that we've seen because we know the wizarding world. This is what happens in the wizarding world. The storyline sometimes references murder. For example, a wizard killed the brother and suicide. For example, the second brother killed himself to join her in death. So again, these are things that we know from the wizarding world and Harry Potter stories that are, it's just common as part of the storytelling. So all of this being wrapped up with a rating T for teen is not surprising. That is your quick news about Hogwarts Legacy for today. They didn't post anything official about it. It was just the update to the bio that people noticed as well as all of the screenshots I've seen of advertisements people are seeing popping up in their feed. So uh, it feels very, very much in line with what we've seen in trailers. And um, I just can't wait for more content like gameplay and such. But um, I'm really excited for Halloween. Come Coming up, and I'm expecting some spooky posts from Hogwarts Legacy soon. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about um, does this rating fit with your expectations? Are there similar games that are rated T for teen that you're like, oh yeah, I could see that because there, there's like similarities in those content descriptors that I would expect. Um, and any and all thoughts are welcome. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, Wands ready.